Pandas is an awesome library with a lot to offer to data scientists to make our lives easier. But sometimes it's a little bit hard to understand the nuances between different functions that they have. So today, let's look into Merge, Join, and Concat. But if you want more information about all different types of Pandas functions, go check out my Pandas cheat sheet. I will leave the link in the description. All right, so let's get started. Today, I'm going to show you the difference between merge, join, and concat on a taxi data set that I use quite often. Uh, in this data set, we're going to have three separate uh, little subsets of data, and then I'm going to show you how to join them together or concat them or merge them. Um, the first thing, of course, I'm going to do is to import my pandas library. Uh, these two things that I'm using here are just things to uh, tell pandas that I want to see all the columns and all the rows uh, without any shortcuts. So if sometimes when the data frame is too long, it will not show you all of them. It will only show the first 20 and then last 20 and they'll have like three dots in between. I don't want that. So that's why uh, these two are here. These are quite useful um, comments. So. Just so you know, you might want to use them later on your projects too. The first little subset of data that I have is, uh, let's say I have a taxi driver who is logging his uh, rides and this is his rides from the 1st of January of 2019. So he started working around four and then he ended working around 11 in the evening. And these are all the passengers, number of passengers that he had on his ride, um, when he picked them up, when he dropped them off, the distance of the trip, and in which location he picked them up. And for locations, we have an ID. And this is in New York. So we will see about the locations of uh, the names of these locations too. Uh, we have the same thing for day two. This is the 2nd of January, 2019. He started a bit uh, later on that day and then he also ended a little bit later. For zones, I have basically a zone lookup table. So for each ID of a zone, like it is here, the location ID, pickup location ID, we have a borrow, uh, we have a zone and we have a ser service zone. So basically three different specifications of where you pick these people up. So, you know, for Queens, you have a bunch of different boroughs, but in inside of it, you have different zones, uh, kind of like neighborhoods and more specific locations. Uh, what I want to do is basically use these three different pandas functions to combine these three different uh, subsets of data. The first one that I want to look into is merge. I have noted down for both uh, all of merge, join and concat, the pandas uh, documentation. So if you have any further questions other than what I say in this video, or if you need more guidance, definitely always make it a habit to go check the documentation. They have great documentation. It's very easy to follow and it will probably answer all of your questions. So you can find all of them here. So what all of the parameters or arguments in the, of this function are doing, what they mean, how you should use them. So uh, let's quickly go over it. If I want to merge two uh, data sets, what I do is I use a call the first data set. This will be the, referred as the left one. And then I say, okay, I want to merge with it the second one. And this will be referred to as the right one. So left and right. Uh, what we do with merge is basically cross-reference them to each other. So as I said, we have the location IDs here. And location IDs are all different numbers, 132, 140, 144. And what merge does is basically then looks at the right data frame. And then uh, based on whichever column that you wanted it to look at, it finds the same number. So the first one was 132. It's going to say, okay, 132, it's here. It's here, it's going to be Queens JFK Airport. So the first person was picked up from JFK Airport. And this is basically the result that I want to see when I merge these two tables. To specify that, I need to specify on which column I want them to be merged. So if they have the same name, both of these columns have the same name on these two different data frames, you can just say on location ID. But for this uh, specific case, they have different names. So for here, it is called PU location ID, pickup location ID. And on the lookup table, it is called location ID. So that's why I have to specify it. I say on the left, you have to look at the pickup location ID. On the right, you have to look at location ID. And then there's also a style of uh, merging, but I'll talk about that in a second. So first, let's see uh, what the outcome of this is going to be. 
as you can see, uh, we have again our trips, trip distance, location ID, and also another location ID from the lookup table. And then now we are correctly merged. Okay, but what does it mean to merge on the left? So basically you have four different options when you're merging. You have left, right, inner, and outer merges. If you ever used SQL, if you know about SQL, this might be familiar to you. Um, but basically left merge means that take the left data frame as it is and then just add things from the right data frame. So uh, let's look at our left data frame. We had nine, sorry, 20 entries here. And if I look again on my merged data frame, again, we have 20 entries. So the original, the left data frame did not change. Only the right data frame was added. And as you see, right data frame was very long, but we only added the information that we needed based on the IDs that match. As you might have guessed, if we change it to right when we're merging, it's going to do the opposite. So it's going to keep the right data frame as it is. So we're going to have many, many entries, as many as we have on the right data frame in the original version. And we're going to merge the left one into it. And because of that, we're going to have a lot of uh, missing values because we do not have as many values as we have in the trip data frame as we have in the lookup data frame. So um, that's, that's the difference between left and right. And then we have outer and inner ones. Outer merge means take the combination, the union of the two IDs that we're using, IDs being the location ID here and location ID there, and then generate a merge table like that. So if we try it here, again, we're going to have a very big, very big table where it has a lot of missing values because do not, we do not have any uh, matching IDs for these ones whereas we have the matching IDs for these ones at the beginning. Uh, if you do inner, on the other hand, you're going to get the intersection of the two IDs. So it's basically kind of similar to left and right in this case, because they have very different sizes. And one of them, the number of IDs in one kind of uh, includes the other one, the number of IDs in the other one. So that's why we're getting very similar results. But Basically, when you're doing outer, you are getting a union of all the IDs that are out there. And when you're doing inner, you are only getting the intersection of the IDs that are out there. So let me quickly do that and show that to you too. Again, we got a similar one that we did when we used the left one. We only got the intersection, so we would not have any missing values in this one. Okay, so now we've seen how merge works. Next, we have join. As I said, again, don't forget to go check out the documentation if you have any further questions or generally while you're using it and you're not sure if there's an option available for you or not. Uh, but join is very, very similar to merge. Actually, merge is kind of like a more flexible uh, version of uh, join at the end of the day. But what you're doing is very similar. As I said, you again have the option to determine how they are merged together. Again, what we do is basically uh, we take the ID from one of them and we cross-reference it to the other one that we are merging or joining with. The only difference is that by default, join merges them together looking at the index. So if you remember in a data frame, we have the columns and we have the index, so this is the index. But it doesn't only have to be the, the number of rows that you have in the index. You can make anything else your index. You can make the passenger count your index, the pickup date time your index. Anything that you want could be the index. Here, again, we have the index as the number or the entry number, basically, of, these, uh, of the rows. But it doesn't have to be that way. It could be anything else. So basically, by default, let me just remove this at first. Again, you do the same thing. You have a left data frame, you have a right data frame, and then you join them. And now how they're joined is basically using their indexes. So let's go check. We saw that on the day one trips data frame, this is the first row or the zeroth row, the index is zero. And for the lookup table, this is the zeroth row again. So let's go check. This is the one where the location ID is two, four, six. And that is true, that's the location ID 246. And if we look at the lookup table, Newark Airport, EWR, it should be the zeroth entry. And EWR, Newark Airport is the zeroth entry. So join is kind of like a fast way 
if you want to merge things together or cross-reference them together, two tables together, uh, using their indexes. This is the fast way to do it. Uh, the thing is, join actually cannot merge or join things. I'm, I'm using them interchangeably because they basically do the same thing as just different ways. Um, cannot do it with other columns. Only you can use on. Well, actually, I just deleted that so I can edit here. Only you can use on. So what it does is that then it changes what it merges with using the uh, left data frame. So instead of looking at the index of the left data frame, from now on, it's going to look at the pickup location ID. But on the right data frame, so in the zones, it is still going to look, uh, look at the index of the uh, table or the data frame. So look at, let's look at the difference here. We were only seeing uh, index of zero match the index of zero. But if I run this, we're going to see that index is instead of index, we use the PU location ID. And then the ID that matches this one is used. So you might say, hey, it looks like they're all one more than uh, the PU location ID. So maybe it like nearly worked. No, it didn't because we see, okay, for this one, the ID 246 was used, right? Let's look at the zone table and see what the 246 index has. So index is here. I go to 246 and yeah, the, because we start the index from zero and the location ID start from one, there is a one distance between them, one difference between them. So that's why when we merge, we merge to 247 Bronx, but it's not actually correct. So that's the difference between join and merge. As I said, merge is basically a more a sophisticated, more complicated, and a more flexible version of join. If you want to do something quickly, merge on the indexes, and um, it's you know they include the same information, so you know you're doing the correct thing. Just go ahead and use join, of course. But I always use merge. I never really use join, anyways. And the last one that we want to look into is concatenation. And in, in short, in pandas, you call it as concat. It's actually very different than the other two ones. And I'm going to show you how to use them using the day one trips of the driver, our driver, and day two trips of our driver. So for concatenation, you do not call it on a data frame like we did here with join or merge. You're going to call it on pandas itself. So we said pandas SPD. So I'm going to call PD, concat, and then I'm going to give it all the data frames that I want to concatenate. It can be more than one. I'm sorry, it can be more than two. So if I run these two, uh, concatenate these two data frames, what I get at the end is I have the rights that my driver has completed on the 1st of January 2019, but also on the 2nd of January 2019. So basically it's kind of like adding them end to end to each other. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have to, you want to make sure that if you want to merge them perfectly without any missing values, you, they need to have the same column names. So if, for example, for some other days, let's say on the first day, this, these are the column names. For the second day, these are the column names too, but instead of trip distance, you have trip dash distance and not underscore distance. Then it's going to create a whole different column it's going to add them that way and you're going to have missing values so you don't want that so always make sure that if you want if if they both have the same columns that they have the same name for the columns that way you can um, concatenate them them without any problems but as you've seen this is kind of like a different way of merging uh, or combining the two data sets or data frames and does not really have much to do with merge or join Two things that you probably want to pay attention to when you're concatenating two data frames is that if you concatenate this, them this way, realize that the index goes from 0 to 19 and then starts again because the indexes are kept uh, as they were in the original one. So you might want to reset the index just to make sure that you do not have any problems in the future with this data frame when you're merging with other things. To solve this problem of, you know, index not looking neat like this, you can easily just use the their argument called ignore index. By default, it's uh, false, but you can say that it's equal to true. And then what's going to happen is that it's just going to ignore the index. The original index is just going to create a whole new index here. So, you know, it goes from 0 to 39. Uh, yeah, just so you know, that's also an option to do. 
Another thing is that you do not always have to concatenate two things side to side. Maybe you have a data frame and you have some extra columns that you want to add and you don't really want to merge them because they already fit perfectly with each other. You just need to kind of paste them together. So then you can use the axes for that. So right now we, the default is to concatenate them on the axis zero. So basically rows on rows. You, if you want, you can also concatenate them to columns to columns. And here is what it will look like if I concatenated them using axis equals one is that, as you see, we have only 19 entries and then we basically pasted them side by side. So I have the first day's trips here and then I have the second day's trips here and it just looks like there are, you know, um, two different days, but side by side, but it could be that, you know, you have some extra information, uh, that for some reason was recorded separately, but they correspond to the same information at the end of the day. So, you know, you just want to concatenate them. So this is just something you can do just so you know. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to go get your free pandas cheat sheet using the link in the description. So you get everything that we just talked about in this video and more about all the other functions of pandas in writing. You can also use it as a reference later. And before you leave, don't forget to give me a like if you like this video and maybe even subscribe to show your support. And I would love to hear any of your comments, questions, or thoughts about this video in the comment section. Thanks for watching again, and I will see you in the next video.